This is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Elhan. Hello. Hi, Christian. Nice to meet you. It's uh, it's great having people in other roles. I too many office apps and services people that I, uh, that I keep talking to. There's uh, so many of us. So it's great to, and, and actually was one of the reasons I started this series was to, to get to know MVPs in other areas. So you are a relatively new Azure MVP. Yeah, that's right. I'm a, a brand new kind of MVP in 2022. It's uh, I'm, and I'm still trying to kind of consume and understand what's going on because there was such a big, uh, it was such a big uh, event for me. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll get into that and talk about it with the summit that just happened. Yeah. For folks that don't know who you are, like who are you? Where are you? What do you do? Sure. So I'm Elhan Yusubov, and I'm a senior manager uh, for cloud and infrastructure team here at Kirk Solutions LLC. Um, what I do is basically I manage a number of cloud engineers and architects in our company. But in terms of day-to-day -day activities, I contribute in different ways to the success of the company. Uh, part of it is uh, helping the business development. Uh, making sure that our stand is Microsoft uh, and partnerships are in place. We call it the Microsoft Partner Network, as you know, Christian. Uh, then, you know, uh, making sure that our customers are actually happy with the solutions that we provide them, which we are mainly focused on cloud infrastructure and security here at T-Rex. And we, we are a big uh, government. Uh, we, we work basically our big... Uh, we work for a big number of uh, government customers yep. and we try to, uh, you know, to deliver mission critical services for them. Yeah, you're part of the world. I don't think that you can, in Maryland, you can get away from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is MVA area, right? So you have a number of uh, government projects and uh, you want to make sure that government is running smoothly and uh, deliver the services to the people. And I think pretty much across the board, it's like every government and uh and military in the u.s uh, uh you know, institution is using office 365 so yes everywhere that's true that, that's very true and uh and also i believe the uh good job that microsoft did is uh, that from the day one when they started to offer the services to the government agencies they made sure that security is top-notch and plus they segregate from commercial offerings. I think that was a great move on Microsoft side, and it's and it's brought its you know um, wealth of uh, appreciation from the government. And plus, you know, uh, Microsoft is even before moving to the cloud and having this Microsoft Azure, they were very well strong um, position for enterprise type of works and that's um, and I'm not going to talk about Active Directory and you know Microsoft Azure Active Directory uh, but they are the products which are uh, on top of the class if you look at you know from that perspective. Well why don't you tell tell me about your path to becoming an MVP so uh, yeah. you know, like, what was that journey like for you? Sure so basically in the beginning, I didn't start this past journey to become an MVP. So it was an uh, even not an it was not an afterthought because that was not what I'm trying to do. What I did is it was before pandemic in 2019, I was doing more of a, a government healthcare things like on HL7 fire and healthcare data standards and APIs. And part of it was that uh, the company where I was working at that time, they would. Uh, where they were more like startup minded and they want to actually get this uh, latest development in healthcare from Microsoft team and bring it to the customer to the, again, it was to the, uh, it was done for the government customer, uh, namely HHS. So at that time, uh, so how it begin, it begin is that there was new developments that were happening on that HL7 fire servers that Microsoft was developing, but they were in, you know, in, private preview and then of course there's a lot of public preview and when it became public preview 
I saw that it's very hard actually to set it up and make it work for, you know, if you want to just learn about it. Yes, it, it was open source, it was accessible, but it was not that easy kind of install, click here, click there kind of stuff you need to do. There was a number of steps involved into that. Uh, in addition to tying, tying that up with your Microsoft Azure uh, tenant. So I just went ahead and blogged about that. And, uh, and after that, I started to blog more about Microsoft uh, Azure infrastructure and about the learning journey that I'm, you know, going through. And then, you know, blog after blog, and then, you know, I start to learn uh, about new things that's happening in infrastructure as a code space of Microsoft Azure. And that's probably, you know, it's a bicep language, right? That came up and it was basically evolution toward the Azure ARM templates, which was a, a, I would say established player in Microsoft area. If you would try to go and, you know, codify your uh, provisioning of uh, Microsoft Azure resources. And at that point I saw that, hey, you know, this is bicep language. This is just brand new. Uh, it also started, I believe, around pandemic time, you know, when our team, Microsoft Azure ARM team started kind of investing time into that. And I started to work more about that. You know, I started to attend the community calls and uh, try to learn about it. And he, and the driver there was because there was uh, Azure ARM templates is, uh, was uh, something that for newcomers, it was very hard kind of to learn. There was a steep learning curve. But uh, new bicep language was trying to basically make sure that it's much easier to start. If you have a little bit coding experience or even no experience, uh, you can start, you know, building your Microsoft Azure resource and managing them effectively with bicep language. Because it was, again, uh, just developing, uh, there was a lot of questions, a number of things were going wrong, but it was fun kind of to learn in the process share in the blogs that I was creating over the time. And that was the way how this, the Cloud Marathoner, and it was trying to help people to learn about, not just my, uh, just not, not just about infrastructure as a code, but also security concepts that are around it. Let me ask you, that because mm -hmm. I, one you know, advice that I give to a lot of people that are like, well, sure. how do I kind of get started in the community? And I, and I, I recommend, I said, just start, blogging about writing about the things that you know things that you're working on things that you're learning mm -hmm. about and one of the so a big part of the pushback that i get yes that is like well i'm not an expert i i don't know everything about the topics i'll be writing about and i just try to communicate it's like right you're that's part of the learning process i mean i don't know how it was for you i certainly it is for me when i write about something i said here's what i know here's what i went, went and did I'm always so appreciative of when people write back and say, you know, if you'd also tried this, this would work. Or the path you're going down, it actually, it won't work because of X, Y, Z, try this. And so you're able to leverage the learning of others, but you can't do that if you're not communicating at what you're working on. And that's what blogging yeah. does. Yes, and I would say uh, when you blog that, you also need to be uh, intentionally clear about you know, what you are trying to uh, achieve, right? Because there's probably when you are trying to do that, there is some type of business problem or some type of technical uh, task that you are trying to accomplish. So if you put that clearly and then say that, hey, this is the way, you know, I think it's going to work out, that, that's, that's the you know, number of steps and six that I tried. And this is my result. As you said, you can get like two type of responses. First one would be, okay, great, thank you very much. I was looking for something similar, and you have it there, so you kind of help to the people. Second one might be that, hey, you know, you did it great, but there is like easier way to do that because there was a number of new features, or there's like certain things that if you incorporate there, you know, you, you would get uh, you would get into your result much faster, and it would be easier to maintain. So I agree, you know, uh, try to write, but to add to what you're saying, try to add something that you're also passionate about. That's also very important because uh, the people who you communicate with, they will feel that flow of energy, positive energy from you. And uh, they'll be as, ex hopefully they'll become as excited as you are 
to learn and do the things, you know, in a way that help them to do their work. work to the achieve them. The hard part is always like getting started. Like, what is that first post? Yeah. How do I go and do that? And it's, uh, you know, yes. I, I think that we, we let our fear kind of mm -hmm. overcome our, our ability to go and start something. Yes. Like it really and doesn't matter. I've seen people literally do the start the paragraph, like, hello world, next paragraph. And then just start, here's yes. the project that I'm working on. Here's what I'm going to try and accomplish. This is what I want to learn about. And then you've started. And then you can just, the next post can be, all right, I went and implemented this piece. Here's what I'm thinking right. about. Here's the business problem. Here's why this, I think this will work. And and, and, and just to add to that, right, don't be afraid to fail. I mean, that's the whole purpose. And I would tell you another thing, you know, part of the blogging uh, where you can get a good traction with uh, people and uh, the community that you are working with is you have to share your failures as well. I did that as well. You know, there were a number of things when, especially when the product is still in beta, you know, you there would be a lot of coaches. But in addition to that coaches, because you have been in this field for many years, you, you, you may have some workarounds, you know, okay, what needs to be done in order to make it work? And the simple example to that might be that, hey, there was a new version that was just released and it's still in beta or alpha, whatever you call it. And when somebody is using certain, uh, when somebody installed that new uh, update, certain things may not work as intended. At that point, what to do, right? So experienced person would say, okay, that's a normal thing, you know, just go uninstall that and, you know, install the previous version that you are sure that's working. And then everything's going to work fine. So there's, you know, wait out. But for, for, for the person who never did that or didn't experience that previously, they would be in kind of uh, shock saying that, hey, you know, I thought this is a new update, it's going to work better, but now I'm stuck, I can't do the previous things. So long story short, sharing the failures and plus your resolution, how, you, uh, how your workaround actually made it work actually is as much important as the happy pass that you're trying to describe in your blogs. Exactly. So what, um, so, so we just had the MVP summit behind us. And that's yes. one thing I have to say is that I, I, I don't know how much you were able to participate in, but it's, uh, it's so difficult to participate in something that can be so valuable, but in this pure online version, it, I mean, the best part of uh, the best, uh, uh, you know, Part of the MVP, the rewards of being an MVP mm -hmm. is the annual on Microsoft campus, you know, event, the, the MVP summit, where you're able to build new relationships and meet the product team members, the feature owners, you know, face to face and have discussions and go out to dinners and lunches and, yeah. and build friendships and build connections there. And, and it just can't be done in a purely virtual way. And even if we next year we're in a hybrid way, anyway, with all of that that just happened, yeah. um, how do you keep up? Like, how do you stay on top of all of the changes and what's happening? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I believe that's kind of valid question for any professional in our field who are doing IT. Right, you need to be uh, up to date. You need to track the changes. And I would say the easiest way, not easiest, but one way that I experienced is you need to follow the community and be part of the things that are going on there. That will make it easier. Because if you are part of the community, you would know, you know, what are the people working on? What are their struggles and what they tried uh, in terms of, you know, new features or new products and it worked or doesn't work. Uh, in my case, for example, to keep up to date with, um, infrastructure as a code and uh, kind of Azure. Um, uh, that in addition to that, like security part of it, meaning that the policy as code and stuff like that, that's also very big interest to me. And uh, even be before becoming an MVP, I went and reached out to the people who are blogging about that, who are basically sharing information online and plus on the GitHub. And I made a number of friends, you know, just out of communicating with them, kind of working their GitHub uh, repo and just contributing there is what I know. Even though I know a little, that's in comparison what they do, but there's always opportunity to get, you know, this communication going on. So what I would say is that don't be afraid just to say, hi, I'm here. 
and I need the help because this community thing, especially the MVPs, cloud community, and overall, I would say IT community, it's uh, very helpful. There are a number of people who are actually willing to lend their hand and help you. And that's especially valuable when you are just trying to learn something that you don't know, and but you know that it's you know important to learn. So just making that baby steps toward and saying hi and explaining you know what's your issues are and what you are trying to learn, or just if you are interested, just follow up certain people, be open in conversation, you know, interact with them on a Twitter, on a LinkedIn. I think the social media actually was a is a big a uh, big blessing in terms of for people to communicate uh, when they have any issues uh, in, in terms of like technical issues and stuff like that, because there is a you know a very good chance that you will get help and you will build friendships and networks that will help you along the way. I think that the only caveat that I would add to that is mm -hmm. be sensitive that with your um, don't look at it as the tap into the community as free consulting. Like yeah, you're yes. looking for help, you're trying to solve problems, right. you're you're building relationships, you're asking questions, mm -hmm. that's all great. But when you start laying out what is like a you know three-day to three-week consulting opportunity, yes. don't be surprised if the response right. is, you know, hey, look, here's my hourly rate, or here's right. you know, here's the process for that. Um, but and then also I would say that back to the earlier point point about starting mm -hmm. um, to blog and and to share the projects you know if, if that seems like a big step then a smaller step is certainly to reach out to people like like elhan and like hey, i've got this question like what does this mean what's the differences between this what should i be thinking about yeah, and start yeah. establish the relationships that way which will help as you have those those conversations will kind of build up your confidence to then go and start sharing the projects that you're working on Yes, and another thing I would add that for the community of uh, technical things that you are interested in, there's always some means of forums or discussions. Uh, for example, for GitHub Bicep, they have discussion space right there on the GitHub of the Azure Bicep, where people just put you know questions there in terms of what they're trying to do and it doesn't work or they try something, but it didn't work. So uh, just to come back to what you commented there, right? And it might be your daily job that you're trying to do something. You need to show them what you tried and what, what didn't work for you, and then try to ask for that piece of advice saying that what I did wrong here, right? So you need to do, uh, because once you start doing that, uh, then you, know, you can get the right direction and then you can dig toward the right solution that will help for you. Yeah, exactly. And, and you brought up a great point too, is that there's a lot of different communities out there I mean, obviously GitHub for a lot of this, and there's a lot of activity that's happening around the patterns and practices teams. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's conversations, there are there's a lot of community activity happening in the Microsoft tech community site. Um, there are tons of Facebook groups and LinkedIn communities yes. around these different topics. And so you need to go and find out where those conversations are happening and then embed yourself within those communities and purchase yes. them. I would say that might be the, the first easiest thing you can do if you want to, you know, get engaged and then work in our list will, backwards. Yeah, it will communities, then talk to people, yes. then start blogging. Right. Yes, yes. Because you need the, uh, the, the first thing that you need to do actually, even for your professional growth, is you need to be engaged. Yeah. You need to be engaged with the technical people, group of people who are uh, trying to do the similar things that you are trying to achieve in terms of, you know, professional work that you know opens the opportunities for networking as you say and then you need to strive and not just consume something that you learn but also contribute i believe that contributions will open even more doors and plus it will advance your um advance you as a you know in your professional career you know there was uh, some uh, good uh, intentions mm -hmm. behind some of the early social networking tools so yes. 20 years ago, where you could only reach out and connect with people um, when you had already contributed something. So basically, like you earn points, contribution right. points by sharing information, and then it gives you the ability to reach out to three more uh, people that are not direct connections 
And so it was, it kind of forced you to get the whole thing. And while that yeah. model has largely kind of fallen off, I mean, there's something to be said about that. I think people, I mean, I generally, I look in, if somebody reaches out to me, the first thing I was like, who is this person? Is this mm -hmm. legitimate? Is this a vendor that's just trying sure. to sell me, you know, user lists or, or India-based development services, which nothing against those teams. They're like, leverage a lot of India-based engineering teams over my right. career, but I don't need the, the three or four, uh, you know, LinkedIn connection requests a day that I receive. Um, but when I, when I look and I see that, hey, I see this person has contributed in a bunch of different areas, and then they suddenly they reach out and connect with me, that is, it, it's a great, uh, like, warm connection that's already made. I see that they're already active and even if I don't have a direct connection with the person, like I know you via the community, I'm more likely than to connect with you and then want to help you when you have le your legitimate questions. Yes, and just to add what you mentioned, right, uh, especially for the people who are trying to get connected, um, when you even send like this connection on the LinkedIn, try to put there a message, you know, uh, what your intention, Always. a little bit about, you don't have to put there, you know, uh, you know, tons of information process. No, you just need to say who you are, you know, what you're interested in, uh, what's your purpose of connecting. Yep. And that actually makes the other person kind of uh, interested to look at your profile and get connected. On, As you said, like on, on my case, I usually accept everyone, uh, but uh, I also looked at their profile, you know, uh, are they uh, sharing relevant things that, you know, uh, so that you know, when we get connected, we are going to be helpful to each other. Right. That's always important there. I, I, I always uh, recommend adding a note, unless it's obvious, yeah. unless there's yes. you know, a coworker that uh, right. just joined in, obviously a new employee in the company, that's really easy. I don't attach a note for that. Okay. I, I, you know, when I get connections that don't have a note attached to it, I'll very quickly look at the profile. If they're in the community, accept. If they're in a role that's clearly something that is, you know, within my field, or if there's SharePoint or Microsoft 365, they're like over on my side, I think something that's office apps yes. and related, they're in. But if I can't make a connection and there's no note, I'll then the last tier, I'll look at who are they already connected to, like our yes. shared connections. And if there are not strong shared connections, I will not accept that. And yeah. there's a reason why. There could be a valid reason why, but that's yeah. why you need to attach a note. Say, hey, yeah. here's why I'm reaching out to you. Don't worry. Well, Alhan, really appreciate you taking the time to uh, get to know you today. For folks that want to find out more about you and reach you, what are the best ways to contact you? Sure. Uh, I would encourage them to come and visit my blog called thecloudmaratoner.com. That's uh, everything you need to learn, mostly about uh, Microsoft infrastructure as a code, bicep language, and security things that's happening. Uh, in addition to that, I would welcome them to get connected with me on Twitter and LinkedIn. Just type my name, you will be able to find them. And, uh, you know, and please share, you know, what you are working on. Uh, I would be happy to know more about you. And plus, uh, you know, share about my work and, uh, make sure that we get connected and uh, we can see helpful results out of our connection. Well, awesome. And of course, for those that are following along, you can find his contact information in the Buckley Planet blog, as well as on, on my YouTube page, as well as in the podcast. So oh, and, I really, really appreciate it. Oh, and good. before the end, Christian, I want to say thank you for you because you have been doing in this community great work by connecting, the MV, by connecting these MVPs and trying to make this uh, you know, YouTube uh, series of interviews. I think that's very helpful for the people kind of to learn, not just about myself, but overall about other MVPs in the area and kind of get clues about that, what it is and plus if they are interested in that, how they can get started. So I think they are doing great contributions and thank you for keeping up this work. Well, I appreciate it. I, I enjoy doing these and that is the, exactly the reason why I do the, the series. And to get that cross pollination across yes. areas as well. But well, Alhan, really have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll we'll connect with you soon, and hopefully next year see you at the uh, the next MVP summit. 
Yeah, I hope to meet you in person as well on our next NFT Summit. Thank you, Christian. Wow.